For those of you who really have division down, it's time for the next level. It's time to become extremely independent and fast in your division. And so we're going to have a look right now at short division using mental strategies. Now, what do I mean? So there's a faster way of doing division than the long division, and it's called short division. But in order to use it, you've really got to have a few skills up your sleeve in a pretty strong way. The first skill you've got to have is pretty good tables knowledge, if not excellent tables knowledge. Otherwise, the process is really going to be very complicated and it's going to slow you down as you're trying to kind of figure out the tables. And there are other things you need to keep track of. So that's why it's essential to have good tables knowledge. So the other one is the ability to do mental arithmetic. So what I'm talking about there is addition and subtraction of various values in your head without having to write too many things down. Because once again, you've got to keep track of a whole bunch of different things in short division in order to get that final answer. The third thing you really need to be able to do is to do a lot of rounding and figuring things out using strategies like petitioning in order to keep the whole process up in your head and to make it truly short division. So in doing short division, you have to just, I'm just going to have to assume that you've got those three things down. You've got good tables knowledge, you've got a good ability to do mental arithmetic, and you've really got the idea of petitioning and doing calculations in your head and rounding in order to do estimations, all kind of nailed. If that's you, you can try short division. So let's have a look at short division right now. So this is a very quick summary of short division. It's what I was just talking about. You've got that tables knowledge, you've got that mental arithmetic, and you've got that petitioning and rounding concept so that you can test out your ideas and your estimations. So assuming that's you, let's have a look at these ones. You can see the answers already there, and you can probably infer a bit of the process just by looking at the questions as I've worked them out. I'm going to just rewrite these same two questions and we're going to do them step by step. And we're also going to use our mental arithmetic and our rounding processes to do them. Okay, so I'm just gonna rewrite the first one over here. Four into 2,115. Just make some space. Four into 2,115. I've put plenty of space between my numbers so that I can do the carrying. Okay, so from the other work you've done in division, you already know the first process, which is to do the gazinters. How many times do numbers go into other numbers? So let's do that. So the first one is four into two. Four into two won't go. When it won't go, write O. Now, of course, you don't really need to do that. You could leave that out, but that's a really good habit for later on in certain questions where that zero kind of pops up in the middle. And you're going to see something like that right here on this video today. So keep an eye out for that. A good habit just to write that zero. When it won't go, write O, or when it won't go, write zero. I kind of suggest you you do that as a, as a good habit. So four into two won't go. So then it becomes four into 21. And because you're doing the short division, you've got good strong tables knowledge. You know that that's five. And four fives are 20, but the number is 21. So that there's one left over, all done in my head. These are pretty simple because we're only dealing with the single digit number here. Okay, so now it becomes four into 11. So four into 11 goes twice which is eight, two fours are eight. So what's left over? Three is left over. And now we do four into 35. Pity it's not 36, because that would have been super handy, but it's not, it's 35. Four into 35 goes eight times. Four eights are 32. The number is 35, so what's left over? Three is left over, and we express that as a fraction. So 528 and three quarters. Just slide back over to my sample. You can see that I got that question the first time. Here I wrote it as remainder three, but linking it into things like equivalent fractions, lowest common multiple, highest common factor, it's a good habit to start writing your remainders in the form of fractions. Okay, so that's when it's just one digit to go into. What about if it's two digits? So this is where it gets really challenging. This is where you've really got to have that good, strong mental arithmetic uh, rounding, estimating, 
and also petitioning. And I'll show you what I mean by the usage of petitioning as we go through the question. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. I'm gonna use a different tool. I'm gonna to use the laser tool because the laser tool is gonna represent the process that I'm doing in my head. I'm kind of gonna do it on the whiteboard screen, but it will just fade away. It's meant to represent what's supposed to be happening in my head. It doesn't get written down, if you're doing this short division, you've got really good arithmetic skills, really good mental calculation skills, so you don't need to write them down. Now, if you need practice in building up that strength, then that's probably something that you should do first before you do this short division with the double digits. Okay, so let's have a look at that question that we did in the example, and I'm going to work through it bit by bit and show you what I'm doing in my head, and I will explain it as I, as I go. 17 into 24,848. So let me put my framework there. You might consider when you do yours in your book, you might even do it a little bit like this. And that's so you've got tons of room to do your carried numbers and you'll see why you need that room as we work through this question. I'm just gonna take that out. So then we work through it in exactly the same way, except this time the number that's going into all the other numbers is 17, which is a pretty big number. Okay, well, seven into two, of course, won't go, and seven into 24, I'm sure you realize it goes once. But what's the remainder? Well, in your head, you're going to do 24 minus 17. You can probably do that pretty quickly, but what could be happening in your head is something like this. Let's see, the difference between 17 and 20 is three. So I'm just gonna sort of mentally hold three in my head. And the difference between 20 and 24 is four, and three and four make seven. So that's going to be the difference. That's going to be the number that's left over. So I write the seven here, 78. So now 17 into 78. Okay, this is where your rounding and your estimating and your ability to do those sorts of mental calculations and petitioning really comes in handy. We're gonna apply it right now. So this is my sort of thought process for how I'm mentally going to do that. I'm gonna think about this number 17 and I'm gonna sort of imagine it as a 20 because it's nearly 20. 17 is quite close to 20. What about 78? Well, 78 is pretty close to 80. Now, if I think about 20 and 80, I can think about a relationship between the 20 and the 80. I can pretty much say to myself, well, how many 20s go into 80? 20, 40, 60, 80. So that's four. So there's probably around about four 17s in 78. So now I'm gonna break that further. I'm gonna do 17 times four, but I'm not gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do it in my head. And how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna use petitioning. So think about the number 17 as 10 and seven, okay? So what's 10 times four? It's 40. I'll keep that in my head. And what's seven times four? It's 28. Now I take the 40 and the 28 and I put them together and I can easily come up with the number 68. They go together very handily and very easy. And look at my number there, it's 78. So I've probably done a pretty good estimate there. So that's four times. And what's the difference between 68 and 78? That's pretty easy, it's 10. So with this 10, you can see why I might want a bit of extra space between my numbers, because in here now I've got the number 104. So now we're gonna use our petitioning and estimating and rounding system to figure out how many 17s go into 104. Again, I could try a whole bunch of things like this, but I really want a better system. I want an efficient system to do justice to the fact that I'm using short division. So once again, I'm gonna use my rounding. I'm gonna stick with 17 being about 20 and 104 being about 100. So how many 20s go into 100? It's five, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So now I'm gonna think about 17 times five as the possibility of getting really close to 104, of course, not going above it. So again, I'm gonna petition it. I'm gonna think of 17 as 10 and seven. So I do 10 times five, which is 50. So I sort of keep that in my 
uh, mind, and 7 times 5, which is 35. So 50 and 35 make 85. 85 and the number's 104. Hmm, I wonder if I can do another one. So now I'll try a different value. I'll try 6 this time. Try and get really close to 104. So 10 times 6, remember the 10 is this 10, 10 times 6 is 60, so I'll sort of keep that in my head. And now I'm going to do 7 times 6, 7 sixes are 42, so 60 and 40 is 100, so 60 and 42 is going to be 102. Oh, and look at my number, it's 104. So that's really close, that's quite excellent. So it's going to be six, and I've just worked out that 17 times six is 102, so that's two left over, and now I get 28. So how many 17s go into 28? Well, 17 goes into 28 one time. So 17 into 28 goes once, and what's left over? So now I'm going to sort of do it as a mental arithmetic. I might do the same kind of um, sort of jumpish method that I used before. So the difference between 17 and 20 is 3, and the difference between 20 and 28 is 8. 8 and 3 is 11. So my remainder is 11. Remainder 11, which I'm going to express as 11 over 17. I wonder if there's any cancelling down here. Well, I don't think so because these numbers are both prime. Now let's look back at our sample. If I did it incorrectly, I'd come up with a very interesting anomaly right here. If I've got 17 here, there's no way that can be right, because 17 will go into 17. So this one has a calculation error, okay? And doing it again, I've discovered my error, and I've got a remainder of 11 over 17, and that's definitely correct, and that's going to be the right answer. So once again, let's think about what we did and what we need to get these correct. We've got to have good tables knowledge, you've got to have good mental arithmetic skills, and you've got to be able to do the partitioning and rounding. And the partitioning and rounding, because you're breaking up those numbers in your head, you can do those calculations in your head very easily. You can, of course, do all those multiplications on paper, and you will be successful, but you'll slow down. If you're going to do that, you may as well do long division, because you end up with the same amount of work anyway. The other thing to do is, okay, so you know you're not quite ready to do that petitioning and all of that sort of thing. So what you can do is this, and what you probably should do is this. You build up that kind of strength. It's almost like you're training for some kind of a, a marathon or some kind of athletic event. And you know that you're not quite fit enough for it yet, but there's probably something you can do about it. And all you need to do is do some mental petitioning. For example, in order to sort of train for this kind of event, you could actually do some of these yourself. For example, what about if you did, let's stick with the number 17, 17 times 25. Now you could work it out, but don't, don't work it out on paper. Do it in your head using the petitioning method, okay? Think of the 17 as a 10 and a 7. Think of the 25 as a 20 and a 5. Then if you do the multiplication, it becomes a lot easier. You know, you've got 1 times 2 and 7 times 5 and things like that. So do a whole bunch of those. If that's a little bit too difficult, start off with just a single digit. So do something like this. 39 times 6. But think of it as 30 times 6, which you can do in your head. 3 sixes are 18, 0, easy. And then 9 times 6. 54, put those two numbers together. That's going to be easy because the first one will always end in a zero because you've got that tens column right here. Do a whole bunch of these until you're feeling really fit and really confident. Then you can up the ante, 136 times four. Then go to 136 times, oops, 136 times 42 and so on, and you develop that skill. Go as, go as far as you can. When you find that it's getting a little too tough, maybe back off for a little bit and wait till you get it. I, I had a friend 
who was much better at this than me, could do these mental calculations very, very quickly. And it was a very handy skill to have, okay? And you can probably develop it if you put enough practice into it. And it saves you time and it saves you paper and it saves you batteries for calculators and things like that. So have a go at using the short division. So there are some examples that will be um, either attached to this video or you'll get in class or that you can write for yourself if you're watching this on YouTube later on and it's not part of the lesson. Single digits into and then double digits into. If you can do the singles and the doubles, uh, you're done really. It just, it's just more stuff to do. It's just extra time. It doesn't actually get harder. It's just gets, it just gets a bit more involved. Okay, good luck. We aren't remote learning anymore. So if you're watching this as part of a class lesson, I'm right there and I can help you if you need help. If you're watching this later on on YouTube, uh, I, I hope this was uh, helpful. I know I kind of went through it very quickly, but you can play the, the tape again a few times and pause as you need. And as ever, good luck.